you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 5v5 custom match here on the most amazing Naroxas map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 in the Northwest, ending with Team 2 in the Southeast. Starting off with the Easternmost player, kind of all by his lonesome here in the East for Team 1. It is Touch My Berries. Going first, land as an Aeon. He is in, like I said, Ruby Red. And he is a 1500. Good thing he uses the word berries instead of some other words, which definitely come to mind. To his west, we have another Aeon player. It is Triple Q or QQQ. Going first, land as an Aeon as well. He is in Pac Man Yellow and he is a thousand rated player. Reminds me of saying something from uh, Poker 99 say cool, 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 except QQQ. To his west, we have a Cybern player here for Team 1. It is in, he is in navy blue. It is Zenny going first land. He is a 1,200, and again, he is in royal blue. And most likely the rear guard air slide here for his team in Imperial Grey. It is Barry the Light, the highest rated player on Team 1 and in the game overall at a 1,900. He is UEF. He's going first land, and again, like I said, mostly second air. And to his west, a player going first land, second air. We have Mutulal. He is in emerald green as another Cybern here for his team. And he is a 1200. So for team one side of things, we have two Aeon in the east. We have a Cybern, two Cybrans actually flanking a UEF. So two Cybrans and one UEF. No Sarah from here for the northern team. And I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. I forgot to do that for the First set of introductions, just so we don't miss any of that early harass going on here by Team 1 and soon to be Team 2, most likely. Starting off with the westernmost player on Team 2, it is the Batman Grey player of Crusader Nova going first land, I'm assuming, second land, third land, and then most likely fourth air. He is a 1500 in Batman Grey, and he is an Aeon. I think he mostly plays Aeon most of the, most of the time anyway, so I think that's a typical faction pick for him to his east we have death cake spelled with two k's and not a c he is going first land as the first first seraphim to introduce here in this game he's also going second air he is in chevy crimson and he is a thousand rated player to his east moving in that of course that eastward direction we have alfie one two three going first land as a cyber and he is a 1500 and pac man gray and again he not pac man gray but he is in uh, Barbie Pink. I don't know where Pac-Man Gray, Pac Gray came from. Apologies for that. And last but not least, actually two players left to introduce. We have the orange color orange player of Maximus Triple X. He is going first line. He is a Seraphim and he is a 1600 in orange to color orange. And on the move, the color and faction that I play most of the time, it is War Machine 1. He is going forest green as a UEF most likely going second air. A lot of players usually go second air, so it's kind of a typical build order. And again, he is a 1200. So for Team 2 side of things, we have one UEF, two Seraphim, an Aeon, and a Cybran. So all of the races represented for Team 2, while Team 1 is lacking only the Seraphim faction in their roster. Let's go ahead and look at the map currently in terms of reclaim. Only 3,300 for 10 players. So just a pen, to a pen, a penance, a a penny for your thoughts almost. Three hundred mass per player. That's not a lot of mass. That's not even worth writing home about, honestly. And we do see that kind of does get offset by the amount of mass points on the map. A lot of them are essentially going to be held by both teams. Not a lot of teams will fight over a particular set of mexes. There is a Trimex in the east, at least from Team 2's perspective. Quad Max, Quad Max. We see another Quad Max back here. And there is one another Quad Max on the western side here for Crusader Nova to scoop up. So essentially that's going to be the front line. It's going to be a horizontal line drawn down the middle. Team 1, of course, in the north and Team 2 in the south. And that is everybody. All introductions I think were made. I don't think I missed anybody. Messed up a color for some really weird reason. And that is it. So we'll turn it back to zero speed or normal speed or default speed, whatever speed name you want to call it. We are seeing comms for both teams, of course, merging into the middle. There is a nice plateau. 
that players can try to get a hold of. That there's the only issue with it is there's no mass points on that plateau, so it's mainly going to be strictly just strategic placement of maybe artillery, PD, shields, uh, some missile launchers, that sort of thing. It's not really going to be a lot of investment. There's not a lot of like you know benefit from claiming that piece of territory, but it does give you a, a little bit of a height advantage in terms of you know T1 units or land units can't easily just overrun you. And it does give you the ability to kind of lock out your opponent if you can get some AA in the area. We do see some air scouts with an interceptor trying to take out that air scout here from Team 2. We have a small, tiny little run by, not really, really run by, but a run by possible opportunity on the cards here from Mutulada in the west. We do see this plateau kind of hampering the pathfinding here for Team one, Team 2's Crusader Nova's units. We'll give a little bit of space for that Mantis and Mole to get in, but those units are funneling southwest with the maybe that mantis will get maybe an engineer and maybe one or two t1 mixes but that might be it but it does look like those units do get kind of a really weird order to move for a second it does slow down that interception time and there's only a couple of units nearby they are aurora they are weaker but they do have better range that uh Mole prov will provide some nice intelligence here for Mutulau being able to see there are units nearby. And that bomber is going to go straight for those units, going to be able to provide some nice air support. Takes out both of them in one run. And this Mantis is going to keep on going. I think he's going to go after assassinating some engineers, I would assume. Kind of weird he didn't stay to take out those T1 mechs, but, you know, maybe he's going after other things. He is going after that mech, though. So at least that's better than nothing in the east. We see Team 2 is pushing on that eastern side. A group of units going after one outlying T1 mix isn't going to be a huge amount of concern here for both players. We'll suck here for War Machine because he does lose two mass a second. But again, two mass is better than 27 mass a second. So I, I would take that any day of the week. And again, we are seeing those comms. They are going to slowly merge here in the east. We haven't seen a lot of more forward momentum here. For Touch My Berries and QQQ or Triple Q, depending on uh, how I feel in the moment of how I say his name. We are seeing upgrades here for Team 1's Mutulau and Zenny. One going for Speed and Range, one going for Stealth. And I would assume he would go for Nano. Uh, he'd probably go for Gun and then Nano for Zenny, most likely. That's usually... It's usually Gun, then Stealth, then Nano, or it's Stealth, Gun, then Nano. We are seeing in the West Sensor Package and Range already installed here. We'll give him a nice uh, vision would also help with detecting, of course, those runbys occurring. But he has a lot of T1 units built up, and he's going to throw that in the face of Barry the Light. So it's gray on gray action here in the west. One of them light, one of them dark. And those T1 units from uh, the player of Mutulau's forces are going to be wiped out by those longer-ranged Aurora. They are tinfoil Aurora, but they are, of course, better than nothing. But in large numbers, again, a 1,000 of anything can kill anything. Crusader number now going for advanced range. We're kind of sticking with more of a defensive measure, not necessarily going for the speed upgrade. But it does give him the ability to be like, look, there are units inbound. I have advanced range. I can go and intercept those pretty easily versus I'm going to just charge my opponent. And all of Team 1's comms are mostly on the front lines. We have Zenny in the middle. Of course, there's a plateau in the middle of the map, so it's you know he could go either way. I feel like he'll probably gravitate towards the western side. We don't see... We kind of see a similar thing happening with Team 2's Alfie, but... It does look like, in terms of the mirroring, we see Maximus taking this position, which Zenny currently has. So it does look like Alfie will be a little bit more of a support role. He is going for air, which probably would explain that. He's going out T2. Would be, wouldn't be surprised to see T3 here in a couple of minutes. And that Western Army is going to continue northward. We have Barry the Light coming in to intercept. Where is the calm of Mutual out to assist? He's over here to the east. He needs to move to the west to help close that gap. There's a lot of bleeding here occurring here for Mutalau. His main base is under threat, and he's over here. We have Barry the Light coming in to assist. That's uh, definitely not the position you want to be in there, Mutalau. You need to defend your, your base. I know he's distracted with other things and whatnot, trying to get some T1 mexes online and eco up and whatnot. But his main base is severely under threat. He's pumping out some T1 bombers to help defend, but there are, of course, Aurora and these Mantis are trying to get into range. There's not a lot of hit points, and those Scorchers are coming in from Barry the Light to assist his Calm and his Bombers, and his course units coming out from Mutulau's own base, are able to stop most of the bleeding. That T1 facility will be fine. He's going after an Engineer, which isn't the hugest concern. 
The last unit online is a Thistle. That has four veterancy, to be fair, at 460 mass killed. It gets its uh, mass worth out of that thing, but it will be killed off eventually by those bombers, and it has given a huge opportunity for Crusader Nova to push. He probably will try to grab this section of the map, most likely get some mexes out of it. We do see a line of T1 PD starting to occur here for Mutulau, and Mutulau actually going to come in from behind and try to pincer maneuver these units if Ferris Light charges with his comm while Mutulau does the same thing. It might force a kill or at least a severe retreat out of Team 2's the Crusader Nova, but Team 1 does have an issue here. There is an army with a gun comm for Death Cake going to push in and assist and it does look like they're going to meet up in this eastern position. Those engineers are going to be taken out very, very quickly. The comm going to intercept the comm here very shortly. I think that's the first comm on comm action we've had, we're going to have in this game at 9 minutes. A little late for the first comm on comm action, but you know, it's going to happen at some point. He has gun on board. He doesn't have anything else. He is repping up 18 hit points a second, so it's not terrible for him, but there's a now a nice fresh army moving in here from the Chevy Crimson player of Death Cake. We have those Mantis coming in to cover the comm just for a little bit. Crusader Nova is still in range. And look, oh, it looked like Mutala was going to just go for the murder-suicide kind of move. But Zenny's moving in with his forces to the east. So it's essentially a three-army versus two situation. Barry the Light is falling back, going for a gun upgrade. Would have liked to see him on the front lines, but he is going to be facing off against a comm with advance range. So... He needs some sort of gun to be able to fight off. And it does look like Team 2 will gain a little bit of territory out of the mix. But they are still pushing, though. They do not want to give up what they've gained. We already have engineers going to reclaim and rebuild here for Mutalat. He is severely wounded, sub 6,000 hit points. Sorry, sub 3,000 hit points. Crusader Nova is sub 8,000. And Mutalat, he's got to get out of range or he's going to die off here. He's trying to chase an advanced range calm. That's definitely not the situation he wants to be in. He, I know he wants to push the comm and units off to be able to give his, you know, his units and other teammates time to rebuild and replenish uh, their forces. But we're seeing units even pulled in from the east from Triple Q to come and assist on this western side. The enemy forces here in the east, well, not enemy, but Team 2's forces should take the opportunity. There's not a lot of stuff here. There's not a lot of units here anymore. And if these two players had a bigger army, they could easily shove... Touch my berries out of his position. He does have speed and advanced range, so it would be a little bit to kill, take him out. But they could still easily do it with a nice T2 force that is starting to slowly build here for War Machine. And Crusader Nova not giving up, not letting up any sort of ground. He's hovering about the 8,000 hit point mark, you know, repping up where he can. He will get one veteran to here pretty shortly. And there's now a lot of spam coming out here. I mean, not spam, but I guess there's a lot of uh, hunters coming out from Team 1. It does look like Triple Q gives over all of those forces to Zenny. Very smart move here. He can focus his APM on his own base and front line. And he doesn't have to worry about a whole lot so far. The calm, actually, of Touch My Berry is actually going to push just by himself. A little bit risky here. It is approaching the 12-minute stage in this game. So again, T3 definitely, yep, on the cards here for Team 2 and on the cards for Team 1. So both players in their air rolls have T3 air, which means they have strap bomber capabilities. Not necessarily they have that on the cards. We do see Death Cake fighting against Zenny here in the East. Zenny has stealth and gun, and Death Cake has gun. One doesn't have any veteran C, and Zenny should have, I was going to say, he should have at least one, and he just got it. Give him a nice boost in hit points and uh, regen per second. Nano going on for Mutu Lao, trying to wrap up very quickly. He'll probably get, I think it's 60 hit points a second. I know UBF gets 50 when they're, I think, when they're not uh, upgraded or a veteran seed. I think it, maybe it's 68. Maybe that's what he gets. Anyway, he'll get a nice amount of hit points per second. Seraphim, of course, has the best nano, but they're also known for some cheeky. I'm going to, you know, just regen a experimental at like 340 hit points a second kind of nonsense very very nonsensical those seraphim commanders with their you know they they essentially become an experimental it's crazy how ex powerful those things are crazy but you know that's the fun of faf is you have different you know different uh, strategies for different factions and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't we have of course uh it does look like that army still pushing all the forces residing with Crusader Nova, we are seeing reinforcements coming in for Death Cake. 
but it's essentially just Death Kick pushing with his calm alone against the combined Aeon and Cybern Force from Zenny. And again, Team 1 is lacking a player and units here on that western side. And a transport out from Team 2's player of War Machine in the west. We see some interceptor coverage, and he's dropping. So it looks like some, he has some skyboxers in there. I was going to say they look like engineers. I would assume they're not engineers. And they are Sparky. They are engineers. They're Sparkies. And we have a, a Parashield as well. We're going to build some T1 PD and wreck the base here in the west here from Mutalau. But there are bombers nearby. They're building T1 PD. I would love to see them build T1 AA. A lot of, some of those engineers have been taken out. The Parashield has been taken out. We do see artillery nearby coming in from... Oh, it's down from the south there from that Medusa. T1 factory spammed up in the main base of Mutalau. Very, very interesting play. Don't really see those sparky drops used very often, especially used like that. And now that T1 PD just wrecking the eco here and infrastructure here for T1's Mutalau. Very, very good move here, War Machine. Very, very good move. Applaud him. You know, not that I'm biased for that color or faction or anything. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But Zenny just taking a lot of shots to the body in terms of his units, not himself. He's wrapped up back to full. He's at 30 hit points a second. Nano almost finished off his Mutalal. He'll be able to come in and intercept. He's almost back in the green. And, of course, a dual calm in the east here for Crusader Nova and Death Cake. And all of their focus is on this eastern side. They essentially have written off the western side. It does look like Mutalal was able to deal with this base, but that's not going to happen again for Mutalal. He's going to put up defenses very, very quickly and be able to deal with that. Mutalal has finished off 84, so a lot more than I thought. That's a decent amount of hit points per second. He's going to fully charge that comm. Pings go down against the comm saying, hey, you got to worry about this. Crusader Nova immediately goes, that's nah, probably not a good idea. And he only has 22 hit points a second, but he has 13,000 hit points. Per, well, I mean, and Mutalal does have more hit points as well. So he could push. Crusader Nova does not have speed, which means he doesn't fire as quickly as those normal Aeon Sniper Commanders. So Team 1's Mutualal could push this with Zenny's help. But, of course, there's the risk of if somebody pushes, the Calm of Death Kick comes in and assists, and it could be a 1v1 one one or even a... They don't want to risk a, a 2v1 scenario here of, like, two comms dying for Team 1. But a nice T2 army attack in the east coming out from both teams, meeting in the middle of the map. Touch my berries, leading his army of blazes. Don't see any shields in there. Very missed opportunity there. Don't see any asylums. We see Maximus on the front line with his 86 hit points a second. Regen commander of Seraphim. Variety. And he has T2 and gun and regular nano. So still very, very chunky. Sniper bots in the rear for him. Going to push back the combo. Touch my berries. We have some units intercepting him in the east coming out from Triple Q. And Maximus is going to start being surrounded a little bit. Those units co for coming inbound. And Crusader Nova gets killed by Barry the Light. Well, we're, attack we're talking about in the east, the west. Crusader Nova pushed a little bit too far forward. It does look like there was a gunship here recently. Yep, a couple of Broadswords get out of range. So those Broadswords just decimated that column of Crusader Nova. And there's now a 5v4 in favor of Team 1 at 16 minutes in this game. And Crusader, no, not Crusader Nova, but Maximus Triple X is being pushed back. Well, a lot of the momentum, a lot of the forces are being petered out very, very quickly by the defenses for Team 2. We have Parashield in the mix. Of course, we have Radar, TMD. We have T3 AA Lightning Tanks. There's a lot of, lot of firepower here in the east. Team 1 is pushing, but they shouldn't push too much and just not dump a bunch of mass. But again, you don't really know that unless you have full vision and can pause and can comment about it and all that junk. Like what I have. We are seeing because of the the departure of Crusader Nova in the West, a lot of that momentum in the West for Team 2 has really just, it's inverted itself. We have the Kama Mutalal. Again, he has two veterans, almost three, he just got three. He'll have 96 hit points a second, regen 17,000 hit points, and is forcing back the Kama and units of Death Cake. And yeah, it's, he, he has to retreat. He cannot take a lot of fire from that calm. He is getting or he is aura, I think is what that is, right? Just have that aura region. I can kind of see the pulse uh, on it. Yeah, that's the regular aura, and then it's the more filled in one is the advanced aura region. Very useful, especially for repping up hit points for T1 units, especially for T1 units that don't have or T2 units that have you know veterancy to be able to rep up themselves. Very very useful. 
ability force error from commanders and can be used even in navy which is just crazy to think about you can just sit under the water with his little aura but we are approaching 20 minutes in this game and haven't even talked about mass income yet team one at 530 or so team two essentially about the same which means despite the departure of team two's crusader nova it's essentially the same amount of mass per second and doesn't really determine who's really in the lead or who's not. Mass territories, is, uh, map territories, essentially about the same. Team one maybe slight advantage in the west, but there's really nothing to, you know, say. Hey, we have a bunch of mexes because of because of it. It's just, hey, you just don't have that territory kind of thing. And we see in the west, Mutulao again running his uh, calm straight into the enemy. A lot of zooing in this mix. There is a couple of Ilshis as well, and now the calm facing off against Deathcake himself and Deathpick gonna just keep charging him again there the units here for him are slowly depleting there are harbingers nearby here for the now controlled units coming out from Maximus kind of surprised he didn't give that over the death kick but uh, yeah, kind of not surprised at the same time it's kind of you know kind of a thing you have to manage but it does look like Mutualao bit off a little bit more than he can chew and with those intercepting units coming out from Maximus this will be the first Bay, uh, not vacation, but uh, ex not excavation, but uh, not deportation, but uh, don't know what the word for it. There is a word for it. I can't remember, what, but the evacuation order, I guess, for Mutalal. It is now a 4v4 at almost 20 minutes in this game. This game is not one of those games that uh, disproves the rule of somebody dies before 20 minutes. Two people have died before 20 minutes. So, <laughs> just adds another tally to the uh, the statistic there. And because of the departure of Mutual Law in the West, Barry the Light will gain control over his units and structures, which is fair because he's in the West. Mutual Law was in the West. Really easy management. It is uh, not the same faction as UEF and Cybermen, which isn't a huge issue because those do mix very well, especially when you get Bricks and Percy's together. Oh, just very, very uh, good mix of units. There is a squad of Harbingers being escorted by some Aurora. I don't see that every day. Usually it's the Aurora escorting the Harbingers. But, of course, Aurora are cheaper to make than Harbingers, so maybe that's usually the case. Anyway, Chrono Dampener in the east for Touch My Berries. Very interesting play here for him. It actually finishes. I thought it canceled, but he does finish it. Took some almost about 100 seconds. And we see his own sniper bots on the front line. I kind of, I don't know. These guys just look like Harbingers with different heads, essentially. They're, they're not, a, they're, they're sniper bots. They're pretty good. This essentially the same amount of hit points as the uh say from variety i just i don't know i think it's just the slender frame it almost looks like a gun just like if you would like a handgun or something you could just hold in your hand uh with you know handgun huh uh, joke uh i just like the design of that a lot better of course they move a little differently because they're on hover versus legs but uh the design definitely goes to the seraphim in that regard but i feel like for mobility and ease of use, I think the uh, Aeon get a little bit better. They can move around a lot better. These guys are a little bit more slower because they kind of have to turn kind of wide and all that. They, they, they're they usually good for just you put it there, you sit it there, and then that's it. These ones are usually meant for more mobile operations. We are seeing the Great Wall of Bury the Light in the west and back here in the north trying to cut off any sort of run bys straight through, uh, not run bys, but to cut throughs down the middle, messing with the pathfinding, trying to protect this T2 Max investment. Definitely a good idea, idea to do that, to be fair. And of course, we did go over the mass income and whatnot. If you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. Please comment down below what team you think is going to win the game and who you think is going to be MVP or MUP depending on the rating and how I feel in, in the moment kind of thing. Let me know down in the comments. I love to read the comments. I do respond to them. It will take me a little bit especially the ones in the morning. At least you know, reference to when my morning is because of work and whatnot. But after work, I usually try to respond to everybody before the end of the day. There are those days where you know home life is you know I'm busy doing stuff but I do commit to responding to every single comment at least once. Sometimes the threads, I, sometimes my phone and sometimes YouTube doesn't really tell me. Even if it's a direct message, they don't, I don't get a notification. Kind of dumb. So new comments are easier to track because they show up on my uh, YouTube studio a lot easier. Because they, they show up as not responded to instead of responded to. But anyway, I still follow some of the change. But when it gets to like 30, 40, 50, 
a hundred days ago kind of thing. It's kind of hard to keep track of. We de but long story short, thank you so much for those who do comment. I encourage those who don't to do that. And again, thank you for those for subscribing, for liking the videos, the series in general. I will, I will get up my own gameplay. Like I said, it's been crazy, but I will get my own gameplay up this week. Depending on when this video releases, that actually might be tomorrow. But it, it will be up on, on the, I think it's Sunday is when I have it uh, scheduled for. So it will be up there. So be on the lookout for that. I'm trying to make my way to a 1,000 rating and be like Death Cake and QQQ, where maybe I might cast myself in one of these games. But, you know, anyway, just long story short, thank you. Please engage with me in whatever form you desire. Let's get back onto the game. My little rant, my little just kind of trail off a of conversation. Anyway, we see a lot of military built, not military build up, but land force build up here for team two. We saw a couple of experimentals built. There is a monkey lord really, really, really upset with that uh, AA gun. And he is just too short to ride the ride. Oh, look at that. He's too short. I'm sorry, bud. You just can't, uh, you can't laser that. You're just too short. Oh, that's so sad. Look at it. Just like, I can't. Dad, I want to. Dad, I want to ride the ride. Sorry, son, you're too short. You have to get your bigger brother of the crab to take care of it for you. But dad, that kind of thing. It's just very, very funny. I think he can hit this one with his longer range gun, but he can't hit the uh, the tracer AA gun. There is a Colossus on its way to the front line here in the east for triple Q. Eventually that Monkey Lord is going to reach him and it's not going to be pretty for that Monkey Lord unless that Colossus takes a serious hit. There's a lot of PD fire, T2 and T3. A lot of it is T3. Of course, T3 Ravagers, kind of hard to track moving targets unless they're giant moving targets. Usually it's easier that, but there are now reinforcements coming in from the east for Touch My Berries. A lot of forces have been drawn from the Western Front, and this would give Team 1 a huge opening if they were paying attention, very similar that happened early on, but in reverse here for Team 2. And these units, again, are being bottlenecked here, so it takes a lot of time to move them to the east, getting a lot of time for Team 1's attack to really just puncture through that front-line defense. There's a lot of pillars here in the mix. There are, of course, Harbingers, which are T3 versus those T2 units. The Colossus having a dance with a Monkey Lord, and that Monkey Lord is going to lose it, but the Colossus will eventually go down to T3 support coming out from the west, from Maximus or the east, depending on how you view it. There is a chicken inbound from him as well. So that Colossus will probably just move out of range of that if he notices it, which he will at this point if he's paying attention to vision from his teammates as the game paused there for a second. But Death Cake was nearby, and I think maybe that, co that co Colossus was going after him We'll kill off one Harbinger because of that crash, but it does look like the attack in the east does peter out for Team 1. This position actually doesn't go down. Surprisingly, the shield almost got killed off. Ravager's still online. A couple of TM one TMD still online. Engineer and all those T2 mixes are still alive, and now all of that mass will go into Team 2's coffers. Granted, some of it was from Team 2, but some of it was from Team 1, especially the Colossus mass. So... Definitely uh, a nice positive net for that, but it does look like Team 1 takes the advantage with the evacuation orders or movement orders from that army from Team 2's death kick. Takes out the frontline T2 mech uh, producing station. Would love to see them go after the radar in the west here for that, uh, that Omni. But Barry the Light pushing forth with his own T3 units. He has some Loyalists and some Bricks. Love the mix. Loyalists. I mean, they're not bad. They're they're really good, of course, at TM, actually TM direction or redirection, not TMD. I guess you could call it TMD, but it's TMD redirection or deflection. Eh, redirection, mm, tomato, potato. Max, I will avenge you from the grave, says Mutulau. Max's base, no. <laughs> uh, it does look like that base doesn't really get taken out as of right now, but it does look like that northern army here for Zenny. It does look, and the radar is also taken out, so Team 1 gets a great grab here. A lot of the radar is down in the west. It does give an opportunity for some sneaky little stealth plays coming in from Team 1. We do see a broadsword running around. Does get shot down by some redeemers, but I think he had three-star veterans. But look at the mass points being assassinated here against Team 2's Maximus in the west. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Mex is gone. Gets a new Omni on it pretty quickly. 
but T3 Pigeons are under threat and will go down. The Ilshis are too late to intercept. These units are already in the main base. This definitely needs to be targeted by Zenny. A huge value out of this. I know Maximus does have his own other T3 uh, T3 Pigeons in the east, but still, taking out T3 Pigeons for you know a decent amount of T2 units definitely would take that trade into the day of the week, especially if we can get some more. You know, energy costs. He's only up about 500, so that would definitely be a huge issue for him. But it does look like the units are going to just keep moving forward and south. Definitely a missed opportunity in that regard. I know he's being chased by a ton of T2 units outbound from Death Cake. But uh, still, it's just missed opportunity. The Omni, that was also a missed opportunity. He's going for Mexes, which honestly, most of these Mexes are already taken out, and they're only T1 at this point. Chicken inbound says Mutual out. Stop with the visual glitch. Stop it. I don't want visual glitch. Thank you, Chicken, for offering me the short reprieve of that. There is a ping in the east by Team 2, and it's coming from Team, or coming about, or about Team 1. Wow. Really kind of struggling with the, the boards today. Colossus essentially with no defenses to really stop him. These T3 units will be able to take out the shield, but it does look like the Colossus will retreat in the face of a chicken. Is really that's it. Even if Team Two, Team One notices it, that Colossus will kill that chicken. So I don't know why he's. Oh, he's moving eastward. Trying to support maybe the Harbingers moving in from the east by touch my berries. There's a lot of Percy's now in this mix with some demolishers, which don't fire unless you put them stationary. So. Throwing them against Harmagers are essentially saying, go die because you can't fire back kind of thing. Harmagers are trying to get out of range of those Percy's. The Ravagers also pretty much eclipsing most of that front line. It does look like they almost cover everything, but there's just a little bit camp that those Harmagers can fly by or actually walk by. Percy by itself does and has a brother with him. A lot of Team 1 engineers going down. T3 AA was being established here in the east to prevent any sort of flybys or any sort of thing. Czar, 40% at 29 minutes and 30 seconds. I love the ping. It's Of course, it's a picture of saying, hey, there is a czar. Hey, it's about 40%, and it's a timestamp. So you know roughly, okay, it's about 40%, which means probably in the next you know X amount of minutes should be finished. I love that. Love that call out by Crusader Nova. And he's dead. Which is sad, but he is armchairing it. He is, you know, the man in the chair saying, you got to watch out for this thing. Going to go shove down your throat. And speaking of air, there hasn't really been a lot of air. We saw, of course, the broadswords earlier on. And there was a couple of broadswords in the south. But there really hasn't been a lot of air from either team. We do see a decent amount of air built up here for Team 2's Alfie. And, of course, Team 1's Barry the Light. But honestly, there's not a lot of air. I mean, let's not a lot of air attacks in that regard. It does look like, oh, the facilities were taken out to go for those uh, adjacency T2, uh, it's actually T1 mass storages. But 57 ASF here for Team 1, and Alfie has 47. It does look like they might engage. The ASFs are being a little bit forward here for Barry the Light. There's not a lot of AA for either team. There's a mobile AA, so if a fight breaks out, it's really going to just go down to the numbers and turning. Very interesting. And, of course, as you we zoom out for a little bit, we can see the mass points still haven't been, most of them have been, you know, built over. But some of them still haven't been built over for Team 2. So just in terms of mass points that are still, Team 1 has the advantage. We saw the 4 pop up very shortly. That might be Pigeon related. That might be just, you know, Control King and Max and then rebuilding it because it's faster than just having an upgrade strategy, which depends on how fast you can build it versus have it upgrade. Depends on what strategy you use. It does look like the AA PD w or AA turret was taken out eventually. Just the Monkey Lord just could not get it done. There's a chicken and a Monkey Lord hanging out in the east. Colossus turning their back to them. We do see that attack maybe starting to materialize, but it's a bunch of missiles versus missiles here in the west. Those missiles are lining up, and they're taking shot after shot. And it's, of course, they're very, you know, it's just clumped together, which means that AOE splash from those missiles getting a ton of value out of it. Those, again, similar things happening against Team 1's units, but now Team, and not, actually not Team D, PD is being built. Team D, Zappers definitely need to be built instead of those PD. That's a lot of missiles. 
Air fight, not really gonna happen. No, they're just taking out some interceptors, not really a huge threat. There is a squadron or so of ASFs in the east. For Barry the Light, maybe he's thinking about those were some bombers or Gunnet Janus or something inbound from a War Machine. But as you can see, the missile launchers, there are 21 of them, and they're really going after those defenses, allowing for those T2 and P3 units very easy access to Team 1's front line. And those missile launchers inbound here from Team 1 are doing a decent amount of work, but again, he needs engineers to build TMD, not PD, because those TMD would hold off those missiles long enough to be able to deal with the missile launchers. A lot of them have been killed off, but the order has been given to move. Team 1 still holds control of that you know, central plateau, but hasn't really done a whole lot with it, at least in terms of any. Wouldn't like to see some artillery, TMD, T3AA, shield something on this plateau, not just a bunch of roaming around Team 1 units. That stage of the game is essentially over. And of course, the best engagement to happen is to attack your enemy from the side, while most of their forces are out of range and all your forces are in range, but the amount of forces for Team 1 is vastly outnumbered in terms of tech, and numbers by Team 2. They will be forced to retreat. Zenny needs some T3, I was going to say some T4 support. One Monkey Lord, even in the face of that, is not enough. A Crab might be enough because of its long range and hit points, but it's going to, you know, or two Monkey Lords. I'd say two Monkey Lords would be enough. Tickle Machines, Tickle Cannons are online. The Cerberus are just, again, tickling these units. Again, as I say a lot, a thousand of anything can kill anything. So I know those people in chat like, Cerberus can kill stuff. Like, it is killing stuff. You need a lot of it. You know, triads, Utashalas, uh, Obsid Oblivions can do a lot better job because they just have more damage per shot. And, you know, depending on the uh, PD, have a little bit of AoE. So clumped up units, definitely a huge value for the Oblivion PD from the Aeon. But the... Czar is overhead for Team 1, inbound with some gunship for support. A lot of those ASFs, of course, will be killed off. Team 2 does not have enough. The Czar is taken out due to Flak and other AA, but there was a nuke that was built, and those broadswords say, no, no nuke for you. And the comm of Alfie does get pinged, and are those broadswords enough? It does look like there's enough, and Alfie is going to go down here 34 minutes in this game. Team 2 has lost another player. Their air player, and it is now a 4v3 in favor of Team 2. And does look like the land attack that was starting to commence for QQQ goes, that's nah, probably not worth it. That is a lot of mass to scoop up here for Team 2, but they lost the nuke that was being built. Would have loved to see the TMD go, not the team, the, the, the SMD go down, but you know, getting a nuke is definitely better than nothing. We do see orders to be build a hub of them are starting to come online here for Maximus. A lot of looks like mass fab farms with some engineering support, it looks like. Those, uh, those holograms are overlapping their team, too. you got to sort out the build order and locations here. Lots of mass fabs being built by Team 2 to scale eco. Of course, that is one of the two strategies to scale eco to do that or get some grass comms. Those are, the, of course, the two main methods to do that. Or just conquer the entire map and take all the mass points. That also works. That's just very hard to do. We do see a group of experimentals here for Team 2 under the control of Maximus. Two chickens and two monkeys versus one... Co ah, two Colossus. I'm going to say two Colossus because it's definitely going to finish in time. T1 PD, eh, it's not really going to cut it. I wouldn't even build the wall sections. I just do T1 PD straight across. But it does look like those chickens and monkeys will fall back. There are units grouping up here in the east. But it does look like the orders for those experimental... Oh, no, now they're giving... The, oh, no, they, 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 can't, they cannot decide. They're very indecisive chicken and monkeys. They just can't decide what to do. It's almost sounding like I said chicken and waffles, which, by the way, chicken and waffles is amazing. If you haven't had chicken and waffles, highly recommend. Amazing. I don't know why it, the chicken... I don't know what it is. I don't know why chicken and waffles taste delicious together, but they just do. Well, let me know down in the comments if you prefer chicken... Not chicken and waffles. Waffles or pancakes? Usually, you know, one one person prefers one over the other. I'm a waffle person. I love putting all the syrup inside the little, like, the little, I call them holes, but it's, in, you know, the little divots in the waffle to, like, fill up with syrup. Mmm, delicious. The pancakes are good, too. I usually go for those smaller pancakes, though. Not really big, f like, flapjack pancakes, those huge pancakes. Just small, like, discs, like, uh, saucer cup size, almost. Nothing really bigger than that, but huge waffle fan. Huge, huge Belgian waffles. Mmm. Oh, delicious. They're so good. And we're talking about food now. Oh, I'm hungry. 
<laughs> not gonna. Maybe I gotta eat some chicken and waffles uh, tomorrow or something. I'm doing this kind of later in the night, so shouldn't be eating at like ten o'clock at night. But eh, I don't have. To, I also don't have chicken and waffles on hand. I have to go make them, and I have to make them, and I'm lazy, and it's late. I'll just have them later. <laughs> I'll have them tomorrow or Saturday or something. Anyway, we're talking about, uh, let's see what's going on in the southwest. It does look like a force is, uh, there are only T1 units and there's a couple of bricks assisting them. Not really a whole lot going on in the west. A lot of the focus is, of course, on this huge army in the west and the um, cent central position here. Already is 40%, says Mutulal, and he would be correct. Yeah, that's about 50%. Yeah, that's about, yeah, that sounds about right. So the dead players on both teams keeping track of what the other team is doing. Love to see that. It does look like a lot of fanning out of AA being built by Team 2's Touch My Berries. Do you have anything on the cards? SMD being focused. I don't see SMD also being focused. Nothing. Air grids. I, you know, you would kind of surprised to not see any artillery, nukes. You know, a couple of experimentals, not really a huge threat. It's, I mean, the gunships have proven to be so far the best way to kill comms and stuff in general. They've killed two comms on Team 2. The only two comms dead were killed by broadswords. So, so far, Team 2 needs more AA, and they are building more, it looks like, as we speak. Maximus is making a point to spread it out. But an attack from three of the four experimentals we saw earlier against one Colossus, that Colossus will lose that fight every day of the week. But Chicken's now going to face two Colossus now. A couple of them do now have etching. Monkey Boy doesn't have etching, so he won't have it pretty shortly. Chicken doesn't have it, and the other Chicken doesn't have it. Well, I mean, they did kind of share the, the kills. So that's kind of fair. But two Colossus versus one Monkey Boy. Definitely going to rip through that thing very, very quickly. Harbinger's trying to stand in front of the Percy's and other Chickens here in the eastern section of the map. And a huge T3 land army and assisting units are inbound. We have those broadswords, as I mentioned earlier, inbound. They'll take out and assist with the first chicken death. They do pull back a little bit due to the ASFs. Now it looks like they're going to engage here first time in the game. 38 minutes besides that attack with that Tsar earlier. And the ASFs get a huge engage, but they fall back just shy of that AA. So when the ASFs go full in and turn around, they're in the the AA range, and that is a lot of ASFs killed from Team 1's Air Force coming up from Barry the Light. And that has got to hurt. Broadswords, you come back in and support, though. The AA on those chickens are no, not great. You can see, even at 2 star veterancy, that chicken is being ripped to shreds by a squadron or so of gunships. Percy's are lining up to be shot by Oblivions, though, so uh, probably should either move those forward or call them back. It does look like there are some artillery rounds firing here against the position of 14 wants QQ. And the ASFs do engage those gunships once again and then just immediately get eviscerated by the AA giving by the a ASF giving Team 1 air control. I don't want to say dominance, because that's a lot of uh, air factories pumping stuff up, but I think I'll say dominance for now. Usually I'd say about 50 or so more. He's at, sitting at 80 versus Maximus's 11. So yeah, I'd say he has air dominance for now. A couple of ASF are going after those broadswords to try to eliminate that threat from the gunships. But of course, uh, Team 1 is not going for Restorers. That would be the best gunship to use against those ASFs, of course. But three Monkey Lords running around is a lot of Monkey Lords, and now they were actually going to intercept the gunships in the west. And there is a chicken moving in for Maximus. He is going to get a couple of T3 mixes and those mass map dual rings killed off. But honestly, this is more of a mass dump than anything else. A lot of engineers killed off in that explosion. Shields going down. That chicken has now two veterancy. I don't think it'll get a third. T3 bricks being pumped out as quickly as they can be for defensive measures as well. And this chicken will kill off a fourth T3 mix once it dies. And it probably will get that T3 land headquarters as well. And we'll get another mech. So one, two, three, four mechs is down with, again, T2 fabrication, mass fabrication support. And a lot of firepower coming off of both the bricks and those Cerberus are... R look at this. Ripping through this chicken. Chicken got a nice rank in veterancy, but will not get a second before it dies. It's just going to be sent in as a suicide to try to kill off units and structures with that uh, the Ion Storm. 
Well, honestly, a lot of those units have fallen back. They aren't. Some of them are still in range. Actually, a lot of them are still in range. More lines of servers being built. And what I like about this line is it's a little bit curved. So while the enemy experimental units are moving in, more and more of those PD are coming into range. You can see that now. You can see the ones on the sides are now in range. The ones in the middle were in range initially. That monkey lord is dropping hit points fairly quickly. The, the tickle cannons are doing pretty well. But now they're just going to be ripped to shreds as well with that uh, laser on board that monkey lord. And in the east, the facility producing those colossus is under threat. The first chicken is down. Second chicken is below 50% of its hit points. Facing off against the colossus below 50% of its hit points. And now T2 triads are being spammed as quickly as they can be. And there's a fat boy in support. So Team 1 and Team 2 are really just throwing anything and everything they have at this push. Does look like the Colossus will be killed off. Engineers were trying to support it. And the chicken gets nice veterancy. 74,000 mass killed. He is severely wounded, though. Either call him back to base or control cam. I'd probably call him back to base because that is really nice to have a four-star. Sorry, five-star chicken at 145 hit points a second. We had a couple of those. I think there were Harbingers going after the Fat Boy. And the Fat Boy is actually in range of Miasmas. And uh, that's not good for the health of that Fat Boy. Which also, Fat Boy uh, ice cream sandwiches, also very delicious. Talk about food, this game. I don't know what it is, but food is food is delicious. But the Zara online for a triple Q going after that chicken dot, allowing it to retreat back to base. ASS for Team 2's dual air forces for Death Kick and Maximus go after that Zara. The Zara doesn't even lose all of its uh, shield capacity. The ASS will get, again, a nice engagement here over the middle of the map. Uh, it's not really usually in one person's hands or the other at this point. The central plateau is kind of just boring. But more and more Team 3 AA sites are being built all around the map. Another run-by opportunity here in the west. A lot of bricks. A couple of Team 1 Medusa support being able to, of course, go after the structures. Primarily the bricks offering the hit point support, the bullet sponges, while the Medusa deal with the actual structures themselves. And another attack down the middle with three monkeys versus one monkey from Maximus. He has an SMD nearby and it's loaded. That'd be a great grab and a nice Omni as well. A lot of vital structures on the west. And that army... Or Death Kick keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And whenever the army moves, another attack from Team 1 engages, which if I was Maximus and I was noticing this for Death Kick, I'd have to say stop moving your army. Or when I move your army, or when your army moves, I'm going to move my army in. Because there's going to be an attack coming in. With a Tsar escorting some of those gunships, gunships going to actually sit on the ground. And the long-range missiles from that Zara are able to target those T-1 Zeus bombers. They're going after the Monkey Lords, of course, the eastern one first. The Colossus is in range to take out the Monkey Lord, but the Monkey Lords are just going to ignore it and keep engaging the Monkey Lord out from Team 2's Maximus. They need to divert westward. That's a lot of AA, AA support, a lot of bomber support. And the Colossus is now not even chasing the Monkey Lords, which means he's going to fall out of range. We'll kill the first one off. But the other two are still going to have to have an uphill battle to fight. There's a couple of T2 Utushalas. Actually, more of them down south as well. A lot of PD to fight through. Team 1 needs some sort of long-range artillery. And I see it actually coming across for both teams. Team 1 has their own Duke T3 artillery. And Team 2 has the, uh, the Hubbath. Yeah, Hubbatham. I always want to say Hathum. One of them, the one for Team 2, is targeting the enemy artillery in terms of you know, Team 2's eyes. Versus Team 1's artillery is going after the air grid, which will diminish the ability for Team 1 to call in, sorry, Team 2 to call in air support, thereby increasing the air dominance or air control for Team 1. And those monkeys are really just ripping through that front line defenses and infrastructure. Those secondary air grids going up all the time, of course. We have some artillery support in the east from all these demolishers. We have Percy's. Percy's a great unit, of course, to use against experimentals. They fire you know, all of their damage with the first shot. And uh, high alpha striking damage used for taking out high single uh, high single fire. Not they have high single fire damage against HPTs or high value targets, those uh, one offs essentially. Unless you have 30 one offs, then it's just standard. Bricks coming in, gets scooped up by that suction arm. Oh, man, that was. It was over here, and he swung all the way over there. Almost did a full 360 no-scope there. Jeez. 
Artillery still landing on the air grid. Cyber shields aren't the best, but they're better than nothing. Of course, half of the air grid is down. But of course, secondary air grids have been built, and there is now a nuke online here for Team 2's player of Maximus Triple X. He's pumping out chickens as fast as he can. We have satellites now under construction for the Eastern play of War Machine. And he's going for... I don't know what he's going for. But it doesn't look, doesn't look like a second artillery is being built so far. So it's still only one artillery for Team 2. I don't see anything in this base. And it's just air grid and mass fab farms, that sort of thing. Nothing too crazy. Again, Aeon shields are the ugliest. I don't know. They should just have kind of a clear color, kind of like the Seraphim. You know, or the UEF. The, they, the Cybrons aren't bad. It's just that, I don't know what it is. It's a blue tilt tint or kind of a purple tint versus a dark tint. It just doesn't make the map look pretty. Anyway, it does look like the artillery has now focused on the air grid itself. We'll get a nice shot. Takes out a couple of pigeons and a shield emitter. Barry the Light, of course, does have his own shield generator on board. And he will finish his second artillery. So Team 1 going to have the advantage in that game for now. It does look like a, another artillery is coming online here for Zenny here pretty shortly. That is a shield. There is an, an emissary now completed. It was just completed a couple of moments ago. And where is this going? My question would be either link up with the artillery here from Touch... Oh, it's not Touch My Berries, but Barry the Light or go after something else. It does look like the artillery from Team 1's now going after the RAS, not the RAS, but the Mass Fab Farms, or the Calm directly, one or the other, but I, I would assume the Mass Fab Farms. Oh, oh, let's watch the shot. It is inbound. Hits part of the uh, PGM, but of course the Mass Fabricator has less health than the PGM, which means that thing would have been only on 500 health, very far, very close to blowing up and killing everything around it. In the east, nice. This is just come at me. <laughs> says, uh, touch my berries. I feel like I will push with six GC. Says, touch my berries. Well, we will watch the push with six GC, sir. We will watch that push. The fourth one is online, which means two more to go. Has a lot of quantum gateways to pump out engineer support to really just ratchet up his eco. Team 1's player of Touch My Berries at 900 and, well, actually almost crossing 1,000 mass per second. Team 2 is Maximus on triple base, of course, almost 1.8, almost doubling that of Team 1's highest eco player of Touch My Berries and severely out ecoing his other teammates. He is the driving force in this game, of course, and if he dies, it'll be gifted. All that income will be gifted over to somebody else. And it does look like Team 1's goal is to diminish that in some way. And it does look like going after the mass fat forms are the uh, name of the game here. Takes out another set of two mass faps. That's 32 mass per second gone. More of that air grid is being flushed out by Team 2's secondary air player of Death Kick. Essentially a bunch of orange for Team 2. And some green and some red versus red, blue, gray and yellow I feel like that's oh, I feel like we have all of the colors of the Olympics I feel like I don't I know there's a green there's a blue there's a red I think there's an orange and is there a yellow I don't know maybe we have all those colors I can't remember I, I don't really watch the Olympics that much so I don't know offhand but it does look like team two has found the artillery here for team one yep they have a Nice little satellite overhead here. It has Omni on board, so nothing is hiding from this thing. And the laser target, of course, the emitters. They're trying to get at them. Some of them under shield coverage. Some of them are not. The Tsar is actually being shot at. Looks like the Tsar was abandoned. Doesn't look like it has any support. A second, a second Novax is online, and all of the artillery support now going into this position. It does give Team 1's opportunity for Zenny to be able to pump out his artillery. Of course, now a fat point online. These two artilleries are going to be perfectly fine for now. I feel like Team 2 figures they go after the weaker of the, sh of the uh, positions in terms of shielding. Just because there's not that much shielding. But, oh, there are still sh Oh, no, there are still shots raining in, I think, to that position. Or maybe I just saw that coming out from Team 1. Could be that. Nah, it looks like that's what it was. But that artillery is breaking the shield slowly, but surely more and more Rascoms trying to hold off that incoming threat. 
Of course, they are, of course, assisting shields as well. Pings go down to say target these shields. And the satellite does go down, which indicates that a Novax is dead. And it does look like the second Novax, where is it? Oh, it's in this position. That's a lot more shielding. That's going to be fine. Third Novax is almost online. Shielding now going to protect that one as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if, oh, no, the mass is gone, so they can't just build over it. Still not really a huge attempt to go after more artillery here for Team 2. Of course, you know, 30 lasers also works. But the Hastue is half-loaded for its first missile. Another artillery, apologies, is being built. Very interestingly placed. Can't get the full P-Gen ring, but most of it's better than nothing, of course. I think that's all the artillery. So Team 2 sitting at one and a half artilleries. Team 1 sitting at three artilleries. One of them, a fourth one, is currently under construction. Teleporter for Zenny. He has laser on board. I don't know where he could teleport, but there is a Colossus inbound from Team 2's Maximus straight down the middle here. Or actually, probably through the west, most likely. Going straight for those Dukes. There's a fat boy and a bunch of T3 broadsword support. The Colossus is at four star ventures. He has killed a lot of stuff in its wake. 67 ma 67,000 mass killed. Colossus dropping into the wet. Sub 20,000 hit points. Is targeting those Ravagers, but will not get the shields down. That's a nice clump of mass on Team 1's doorstep. But another Colossus to the west. While Team 1 is focused on long range artillery fire, Team 2 focused on, you know, just land engagements. But a bunch of Colossus are actually being pushed back or held by Team 2. The amount of Ravager spam and the amount of just everything. Chickens running straight into those Colossus. The one, two, three, four of those Colossus are already down. Chicken does go down behind those Colossus. The fifth one goes down. The sixth one goes down. And that is a ton of mass for Team 2 to scoop up. Lightning for the win, says Crusader. Max, keep building artillery. He's targeting sat centers. Uh, no point shooting the yellow already. Too much shield. That, uh, that's got to hurt. That is a lot is a lot of mass. How much is... Actually, that'd be a good question. How much mass is currently on view? Don't care about the mass bat panel. 155,000. Let's see if I can get 152,000 on screen. This is as far as I can go. That is a ton. That is a ton of mass. And artillery actually coming in from Team 1, striking this position just directly in the face. There goes an Omni. That's gonna hurt. SMD gonna go... I just loaded, but probably gonna go down as well. And that's a creep of artillery fire slowly moving southward. There is a chicken in defense here for Team 2. A second one on its way as well. Those uh, engineers now just going to scoop up all that reclaim as fast as they can. And artillery just mowing its way southward. Well, at least T3 mobile, not T3 static. T3 static still online here for Barry the Light. And it does look like the disruptor was abandoned for the much better and uh, water cannery water cannon of the scathus we have of course the emissary in the east and another emissary on for team one's touch my berries uh, that's one two three four online artillery here for team one and team two just lost their first how about them the second one also killed off it looks like well, it wasn't even finished and that is a lot of artillery fire and it's going to slowly oh no there's one right here there's one right here it does look like, uh, yeah, they did get one online. So that looks like they were building. No, they took out the nuke. That's what it was. They took out the nuke, not the artillery. The so team two is not without an artillery, but uh, four versus one, not a good, uh, not a good bet. I would make. Nope. We started the arty. What was it? We started the arty party and we didn't escalate it. Yeah, that's true. We have eco though. <laughs> Yeah, Team 2 at 3.4 thousand. We have Maximus Triple X producing essentially more mass than the entirety of Team 1. Already is just lame, says Maximus. Uh, yeah, I get that. But then it really, if you don't do Arty, then it's kind of hard to take out Eco sometimes. And you can just sit there and Eco up. And then, it, I, I don't know. There's again arguments for both. If you don't want to do Arty, just make a gentleman's agreement at the beginning and then be done with it. We do see a push coming out from the west. It doesn't really get that far, unfortunately. It does get some distance, but it's just dumping mass on Team 1's doorstep. But again, producing 
not double, but 1.5 times the amount of mass than your opponent. You can throw away a couple of Colossus here or there. But with four artillery raining down plasma from all, actually, sorry, excuse me, five artillery online for Team 1 raining plasma down every which way. It's not feeling good. Zenny does have the teleporter. He hasn't engaged it yet, so waiting to use it. Of course, doesn't want to run and doesn't want to teleport in there and die. Don't blame him in that regard. Air grid is being targeted by Barry the Light. The other artillery is focusing on, it looks like, the sats, the satellites here for Team 2's War Machine. And at 54 minutes in this game, I mean, there is a Colossus moving forward, but given the scene we've seen earlier on, it's, uh, it might get some distance. But I feel like speeding it up to one kind of justifies it. There's not really a whole lot of action in the east in terms of land. It's just already in the west. There is one Colossus. But it's already dropped into the yellow. Being pushed back by Ravagers and two Fat Boys. And with two Fat Boys, it's not really the engagement you want. Yolana coming online here for Team 2. It is almost half done here. It does look like Team 2's Death Kick doesn't have a lot of powers to support it. And with the already reigning in, that is definitely not the situation you want to be in. Let's see. Let's look at his power reserve. Oh, no. His powers are fine. Maybe they just were down due to artillery fire. But it looked like all of them shut off. at this. Oh, he also stopped working on the YOLO, to be fair. Uh, that was definitely what it was. It looks like there was a main. Okay. So, Team 2. Oh, okay. That's got to suck here for uh, Death Kick losing his air grid. But just, just to point this out, when you have one player building a YOLO, and that's almost half done, and then you decide to build your own game under their uh, war machine, uh, just focus on the one that's already half built, because uh, it'll build faster. If team, two, obviously team two, sorry, team one, sees this, definitely not the uh, best idea to be in. At least if they see you supporting it, at least they know about it. They don't know about the Maver, which is good, but it's going to take a while to build that. So it's, it's about time or stealth. Like, do you take your time and build it stealthily, or do you rush it and build the YOLO? And I feel like at this point, you rush it and build the YOLO because you really need that support. Team 1 doesn't really have a defense against that. ASF's in the rear. It doesn't look like Strat Bombers came in and targeted both of those artillery here for Team 1. They do take out both of the Arties here for Barry the Lights. An explosion in the south that is a Rascom, that is a Rascom or a Yolocom, whatever they, uh, not Yolo, but Rambocom. Barry the Light is going to hide under some shield coverage. A lot of his air grid is going to go up in smoke due to the satellite. He's trying to spam up T2 shields to protect it, though. Fat Boy almost finished as well. The Team 2 isn't going to break on the ground, especially with multiple Fat Boys defending. But unfortunately, even if Team 2 takes out artillery in the west, there's still some in the east. And a second one being built here by Barry the Light. And, of course, the Scathis not really being assisted by Team 1 Zenny. And all the focus, of course, is on the YOLO, which is still being built. But the Emissary Fire comes in and takes out all the Pigeons nearby. The hit points drop. Oh, Death Kick's Calm takes a hit. He needs to move immediately or he's going to die to Artillery Fire. Next Emissary Shot comes in, takes out the YOLO. And that is it for that artillery, uh, artillery, that nuke launcher. Maver's going up not super slow, but it's going to take a while now at this point. I was going to say reclaim the YOLO with what you got, 41,000 mass. Funnel it into the Maver. That's better than nothing at this point, but artillery's still raining in, taking out engineering support. It does look like he's going to build some shield support and then maybe go after the Maver. The shields around the Maver are going down. Way, 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 way more shields. Yes, I love Crusader Nova saying way, 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 way more shields. <laughs> Thank you, Crusader Nova. I definitely appreciate the, uh, just that you need more shields. But not only do you need more shields, but you need way, 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 way more shields. <laughs> you, need a, you need enough shields to shield, like, an infinite amount of nukes, if that is possible. But it does look like the emissaries are focusing on the satellite stations, and the satellite station isn't filming too hot. It's only at 4,000 hit points left and I thought I heard a Yolo not a Yolana Os but a uh, bomber but it's just a T3 bomber it isn't a T4 variety no 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 those are those have to just be strap bombers I, I, I don't see the the triangle shape that is the uh, Awasa bomber I just see the donut overhead for team 2 Maximus is that, has that at 59 minutes in this game I feel like I'm going to slow it down a little bit you don't really notice that much of a change, but that, that plus one speed does make a difference. 
Large land army going to attack once again, but again, four chickens going to fall back to PD support. Two more chickens, so six chickens in the east against a horde of harbingers and six more colossus. Sorry, sorry, seven more colossus. Actually, eight. There's eight more colossi online. All those units will engage the PD, or be engaged by the PD. Definitely the disadvantage there. The T3 units need to fall back behind the T4 variety. Maximus' base still holding pretty strong. Of course, there are just some slight assassinations going on everywhere. The Mavor does look like it was spotted. Yep, they have some eyes on it, so they definitely know what's going on there. And the shield is collapsing around it. Definitely not the place to be. Colossus going to take the brunt of that attack. And here we go. Eight Colossi versus six chickens. This is just a horde of experimentals. Colossus going down soon, I would assume. We have a chicken that's gone down. The first Colossus is down. Second Colossus is down. We have strap bombers over the top for Team 2. Another chicken goes down. Those chickens need to die behind the enemy lines because of the Colossus, you know, essentially hug the chickens. The chickens, when they die, are just going to rip through them. You can see the ion storms just wrecking havoc in the western side of that engagement. Colossus cleared out his side of things, but the chicken's going to push northward and just ignore the Colossus. Now more chickens are inbound. This is just a gaggle of chickens here. Chickens are just annihilating anything and everything here. This Colossus is going to die to chicken fire in the back. This Colossus is going to die to chicken fire in the front. Lots and lots of Kentucky Fried Chicken here in the east for Team 2 is Maximus. And there are just more. There is just more and more mass appearing as time goes on, of course. 200,000 mass, so 50,000 mass, more, 50, yeah, 50,000 mass more than earlier. And that's essentially all experimentals in T3 units. Artillery fire raining in constantly. But with five chickens, they're going to push that front line. One Colossus is online, but a couple of Harbingers and an Asylum isn't going to do a whole lot. Emissary fire raining in from above from Team 1, targeting, I don't know what they're targeting at this point, targeting anything and everything. I think the, that, the artillery position was gone earlier on. The Duke is gone, of course. Not the Duke. The Nuke is gone. The Mavor is now gone. Team 2 doesn't really have a leg to stand on. Emissary to the west being built. We have another Donuts. I think that's maybe the same. No, it's not the same Donut. That is a new Donut. Donut crash landed over here. Colossus in the west. One, two, three, four, five Colossi in the west. We have five chickens in the east. It's just a game filled with chickens and Colossi. A couple of Monkey Lords. Not a lot of crabs. To be fair, but more these Colossus need to engage. They need to defend four or five chickens punching through the front lines. Definitely is not uh, what Team 1 needs to win this game. More Monkeyloids and T3 support moving in to intercept. Now the Colossus are giving the order to, to intercept. A couple of bricks. Actually, those are person. Not going to do a whole lot. Engineers already on the case here to scoop up. We have some T3 Rambo preset commanders. They can easily actually scoop up this stuff as well. New wave of strats is up. That's Crusader Nova. And uh, those chickens are actually getting pretty far. The chicken going to intercept the two Colossus, body block it, slow it down while these chickens are inbound for this T2, T3 artillery base. There is a Colossus online. A couple of Rascoms are going to go up in smoke, however. It is not going to finish in time. Team 1 has a huge blunder on their hands, a huge attack coming in. We have an attack from the west for Maximus. He is going to try to win this game with land and call it a day with artillery fire raining in all around him. Chicken gets killed off. Another chicken gets killed off. Is it going to be enough? A huge amount of T1 PD was spammed up as well. Triple Q's calm is nearby. He takes a hit, but the chicken also dies right. Oh, it's, oh, it's going to be close to that shield range. If the, there's a cascade of these Rascoms, it's going to really hurt this uh, T3 artillery. Oh, the shields go down. The portal is going to go down. Shield pops back online. Pigeon goes down. Second Pigeon goes down. The emissary looks to be fine. Chicken fire, chicken ion fire looks like it's diminishing. That was a huge push by Maximus. Didn't really do. I mean, he did some lasting damage, but didn't do what he really wanted was to take out those emissaries. It does look like there's a couple of harbingers making their way eastward, though. That scathless looks like it's been abandoned. Zenny still has his teleporter and laser on board. And now it looks like that crab will kill off that Colossus just barely. A couple of Harbingers could come in and try to kill off that crab, but they weren't close enough. SMD is pretty close, and it does get pinged. 
But I don't know if that Colossus will have enough time to go after it. A lot of incoming fire from these bricks. You can see the nature of the brick designed to just spit out as much plasma as they can. One hour, three minutes in this game. And, oh, a Colossus at the same time goes down to a chicken. And it's just more dead experimentals in the east, more dead experimentals in the west. Doesn't look like the Arties were rebuilt by Team 1. He's getting some transports, though. Oh, Rats, Rascom? Rask, where, oh, Rascom in the back. Okay, look. where. Oh, we now hear and see a Awasaw Bomber online. How's the Emissary doing? It's almost above half. We have Bugs. One of them is about to finish. Very interesting uh, unit makeup here down south. Just a couple of Bugs going to be primed up. I mean, they're not bad. You need air control, realistically. Huge wave of spy planes inbound for Team One's Zenny. Going to know anything and everything in that base. They'll know the locations of the comms. Second, Awasa Bomber over the hump for, you know, 100%. Is that, I think, almost 75. Pretty close to it. Strat Bombers have been noticed as well, if Team One is paying attention. Army to the west going to engage once again. But with three fat boys online, there is one, two, three, four, five, six colossi with I'm assuming more on the way. Strat bombers probably gonna target the fat boys first. That would be my guess. Those strat bombers are inbound. There is actually a revenant in that mix as well. Fat boy shielding will hold off for now. Ace have come in and intercept some of those strat bombers. Kill off most of them. AA support will kill off the rest. ASF now go after that donut. Drop it down into almost the yellow. Colossus is going to keep charging here for Team 2 is Maximus. He will not give up. He will not uh, stop producing those experimentals. Two chickens in the east now. He is just pumping stuff out. Just so much being just thrown at his opponents. He has a couple of T2, actually T1 hover drones protecting his comms location. Emissary fire actually raining in around him, which would explain that. Some of those shields do actually go down, and Maximus will actually have to move a little bit. He's going for T3s for, for some more hit points. Ah. And there's just so much orange. It does look like War Machine has gifted everything over to his teammate of Maximus, and four artillery shots inbound. Where is that coming from? Oh, from the five emissaries in the north. That's where they're coming from. That's five emissaries. That's a lot. With two more in the uh, a little bit west of that, that's seven. Of course, these don't count because they're not even online. That's seven emissaries online for Team 1. Team 2 surprisingly still has shields and is still fine. It does look like they're targeting the comm directly. YOLO will be started. And I feel like once Team 1 notices that, which they obviously do because they can have an eye on it and they see it, can we just target him, please? <laughs> Says... Uh, Says team somebody from Team 1. Target Pigeon says bury the light. I mean, at this point, what's his eco like? What, how much how much extra energy does he... He doesn't actually have a lot of energy to spare, to be fair. So if you target the Pigeons, definitely wreck up his eco a little bit. Of course, he's supporting so many shields. Of course, the number constantly fluctuates because of that. Does look like those emissaries are breaking through very quickly, though. He's got to be very careful with that. He is spamming up more and more shields as we speak. That yellow is going up ah, decently fast. He has two Awasaw bombers under his control with a donut in the west. I mean, he could go for this, you know, win position of emissaries. And, of course, you know, it's got to appear at some point with an Aeon player. Over 40% completed with that Paragon. Does Team 2 know about it? They do not. They don't even know. Uh, R five already, question mark. That's, they don't even know the exact figures. Definitely need some spy planes over that mess. But with all that artillery fire raining in constantly, that YOLO is not going to finish, and it does not. All the shields are going down pretty quickly. The shield emitters as well are going down, so you can't sustain the amount of shielding just due to that fact. Of, oh, of course, the, the shielding can be taken out. The capacity can be taken out. But uh, if you can't have emitters, then you don't have shields at all. But another squad of six Colossi moving into the front. And there's actually not a lot of defenses now for Maximus. Of course, he has to deal with a lot of other things, moving his calm and whatnot. But uh, two Awasa bombers over the top will diminish the health points on those Colossus here for Team 1's red player of Touch My Berries. Chickens are inbound to help assist. And, of course, Cormoran T3 Strat Bombers... And they are really wrecking those Colossus hit points. Gets another one. 
And this one will probably die here pretty shortly. Almost dead there. These Colossus are just being thrown at their opponent. They don't really care. Emissary just going to take anything and everything out. Constantly trying to target that comm. Do not want him any reprieve. Constantly focus on moving him versus on other Engine efforts. Launched. Nuke is launched. I think that's the first nuke of the game. Coming out from where is my question? Team 2? I don't see the icon anywhere. Where is it? Oh, it's, yeah, it's coming out from Team 2. They have built a regular nuke launcher, which is better, of course, than nothing. It's going over the top. Is there an SMD online? There is not. It's going... Oh, nope, it's online. Okay, it was being hit by Barry the Light. Two Disruptor... Not Disruptors. Two Dukes online here for Barry the Light. They'll shoot that nuke down. One hour, eight minutes in this game. First nuke of the game. Announcer said the name of the channel. Always love to see that. Emissary Fire targeted immediately at that nuke. And will take out everything with all that firepower. It takes out a decent amount of pigeons and ma uh, mass fabs. And I feel like the second or third body will nail that, duke, or that nuke pretty, pretty quickly. There it goes. Oh, overshoots it just a little bit. The shield is uh, spammed up very quickly, but pigeons are going down and shield capacity is going down and everything's going down. He's negative on power. He's not keeping shields online. And there it goes. The nuke is down for Team 2. I feel like at this point, Maximus send everything in, kill something off. Once that Paragon is finished, that is going to be it. And it looks like it's just going to be spamming Salvations. Yeah, it's not... Uh, especially when he doesn't even know about it. You know, and he still doesn't even know about it. But definitely, uh, definitely on the uh, receiving end of a lot of pain. Does look like he did keep his column alive pretty well, though. So that's good for that. Still has a bunch of mass in the base that he could uh, reclaim. It doesn't look like War Machine's going to go after that. Constantly throwing chickens and colossus together. And we now have, of course, that Soul Ripper online. The Awasa bomb, the yeah, Awasa bombers just really getting a bunch of veterans in this game. Second nuke out. This time from Team 1, I would assume. Yep, in the rear. Here it is. It is a Liberator. Very interesting name for a nuke because it doesn't really liberate. It just destroys. Like Apocalypse is a good name because it destroys everything. And then I think Stone Age is also a good name because it reduces everything to the Stone Age. Liberator is kind of weird, though. It, like, liberates their souls, I guess, would be the word I would use. Still an interesting name, though. Yep, yeah, what the Hastue. I have to look up what that name means. But the nuke is inbound. It's going for the comm. There's no SMD online. They were all assassinated. The com or they won't even build SMD. Nobody nah, saw that. Not nobody saw that coming, but definitely an oversight there. And now Maximus has been defeated by Zenny. One hour, ten minutes in this game. And at this point, everything will get transferred over to War Machine. He'll have to take over everything and the amount of uh, zeal and vigor to keep fighting in this game might have just fallen out. Does look like GG well played thrown in the chat by multiple players on Team 2. Oops, says uh, Barry the Light. All guys, do what you want about Game Enders. Do you, do you know about Game Enders? Good stuff, <laughs> says Barry the Light. Uh, yeah, they well, they were building them. Got ending gore. What good stuff. Gore ending games. Yeah, you killed them, <laughs> said Death Cake. Yeah. They did kill him multiple times. Not a single one was actually officially built by Team 2. But a gating... Oh, nope, that is a, uh, a chicken. I thought that was a gating in by Team 1. The Paragon is finished. War is AFK, sadly. Oh, that's, that's what happened. You kept killing them because this side <laughs> wouldn't build enough T3 already. We started three YOLOs and a Mavor this game. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff that was started and not finished. And unfortunately here for Team 2, it is the beginning. Uh, it's been the beginning of the end, but it is now officially the beginning of the end. All artillery fire essentially focused on Team 2's combo. War Machine, he actually moves around. He'll control K. And it did look like Death can control K's as well, making this a win for Team 1. One hour, 11 minutes, 41 seconds in this game. Four of the five players on Team 1 remain standing. They lost Mutulal early on with sub-20 minutes. But that's okay. Team one still won, which means even if you die, you'll win. So you know it's a all in, it's a one for all instead of an all for one kind of thing. But in terms of MVP or MUP, I mean I gotta give some props to Maximus Triple X for just pumping out, constantly would not stop. He was you know some players would have just 
quit, recalled, whatever the case may be, but he just kept going at it, kept trying to defend, kept trying to push back. Had a nice push up the middle, but was just barely short of some artillery. It looks like another one was built. But that was a lot of that's a lot of chickens, a lot of colossus, lots of experimentals in this game. I don't know if it's as many experimentals as that other game I casted a week or so ago. Maybe it was early this week. Maybe it was last week. Sometime in the last week or so, 150 experimentals built. I don't think it's that many. I'd give it maybe 75 or so. Because there were a lot of Colossus. There were a lot of chickens. Not really a lot of crabs. A couple of fat boys. And we saw one bug. A couple of uh, Awasa bombers. Looks like more of them were being built. But, uh, yeah, I feel like, but props to Maximus. I don't know if he gets MVP, but just props to Maximus for just keeping it together, just keep on charging, and he had a great impact in this game. Had he built more T3 artillery and he fought back in that regard, maybe he would have stood a chance, but again, five artillery that was built, of course, a Paragon and two Salvations, and then three artillery, two more artillery, and the Scathus was actually being built, to be fair, so technically we did see, quote-unquote, all four game enters in this game, not all of them were built, though, and finished, but we saw them at least. So I uh, can't get everything. You know, some, uh, some games I love to see all four. and Actually, every game I love to see all four of them, but this doesn't happen all the time. So when it closely happens, I'll take it. But I feel like in terms of MVP, I mean, I might just have to give it to Touch My Berries. He held the East for the entire game. He tried to push his best. You can see the distance that he really got. He got essentially to the main front shielding of Team Two, but he had so he had such a hill to climb. Team Two had the better eco, produced so many chickens and defenses. He was pumping out experimentals. He was pumping out artillery. He pumped out five emissaries and a bunch of colossus, and he was just pumping out eco. How many of those rascoms did you have at the game, sir? Sir had a hundred and seven. Just a ton of mass, 11 mass per second. That's at least 1,000 mass, 1,100 mass just from Rascoms. A ton of mass at the end of the game. Obviously, the Paragon also definitely skews those numbers. But I feel like Touch, Touch My Berries gets the MVP award for this game. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about that. Hit the sub button. Of course, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And, of course, hit that share button to share it to anyone, everyone, and, of course, especially to your pets. Your pets, you know, enjoy spending time with you, and why not share a nice cup of joe or juice or java juice or whatever you like to drink or eat. Sit down and watch one of my casts. Maybe this one, maybe a different one, but uh, watch a cast. Watch another one. Why not? There should be some recommended ones on the screen either shortly or right now. And, again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one.